Hi everyone, let's go through this lab. I'd like to give you the opportunity to look at it in a video as well. What you want to do is log into your account and you'll show up here in the welcome page under home. You have this bar up here on the top and that can take you to different places in this website which you'll need. For example, you can click on map here and that will start you off. Follow the instructions in the lab and so after this step where you're creating a new map you're going to change the base layer this is optional the base maps are here on the left hand side in this dark bar choose one that will be appropriate to the kind of maps you will be creating in this case a light canvas would work fine because we're making thematic maps click back up to add here browse layers you want to go to the living atlas and then type in as it's described in your lab instructions population statistics from the u.s census i'm going to just copy and paste it right from the document and so you just see several layers the one we want is at the top so i'm going to click this little add button here and it brings it into the united states let's say i want to work in, on florida I'm interested in just the state of Florida. I can use my mouse to zoom in or these little plus and minus buttons here. Then I don't need to see this anymore. So I'm just going to exit out on the top here. Now, what you see here is you have a layers button here that will show the layer you just added. You can expand the layer and you see it has five different geographic units of analysis you might want to work with states you might want to work with block groups or whatnot we're going to be working with counties now what happens is if you zoom in and out this will change automatically it will adjust to the unit of analysis so you want to zoom in until you see county show up darken up like that then you want to navigate to your state that you're going to be highlighting and then click on the unit of analysis county here and you'll see several buttons pop up on the right what we want to do now is visualize some of these population characteristics to do that first i want to get rid of everywhere else i'm not interested in so i'm just interested in florida i'm going to go to the filter add the expression and i'm going to change my expression to show only florida so i'm going to, set, I'm going to look for the state out of all the attributes in the data and I'm going to say state is Florida now don't hit add expression again what you want to do is hit save and now you just have the state here okay it's already giving us a nice map but what's it a map of we're going to look at the styles or the symbology right here in the top right we want to see what attributes the computer chose for us it chose urban and rural population probably isn't what i want so i'm going to get rid of these x these out and i'm going to click on field and choose the one i do want i want working age population so i'm going to choose age up here and see what i get search by age here's working age population Put a check mark on it and add it. Now, this is not a very good looking map here. I would not choose to use this particular style. So I'm going to look to something better. So I'm going to choose dot density. Not bad. It's not great though because it's doing it by counties. So it's really not what I'm looking for particularly. Let me try looking at shading maps. Click on here. Let's say I want to change the way that the data is structured. I do that by going to classify data turn that on and then here i can use different methods and choose number of classes i want to do five classes and i might want to use instead of natural breaks which we'll talk about these later i'm going to use a standard deviation okay so this breaks up the data differently and is going to just show the data differently so you, what you want to do is play with it and see which of these different methods actually displays the data the way you want it to display for your own research purposes so i'm going to choose done here i'm not crazy about the colors so i'm going to go back here under style options and i'm going to change the colors here the color scheme 
If you're doing uh, one field, or one attribute, you probably want to do a shading display. So I'm going to stick with shading ones that don't have multiple colors, but single colors. A hard and fast rule, it's not an absolute rule, but it does tend to work. I'm going to go with this one here. And take a look. Not bad. I, this is easier on the eyes. Probably need to fix that standard deviation stuff there. It doesn't look that great. What we can do there is right on here, we can go ahead and just change the label to what we want for the purposes of the map. If you're displaying this map to a general audience and you don't want to be messing around with standard deviations, most people won't know what that is. Or you can simply just pick a different kind of method and then just hit done and there's your map now what we want to do here is save the map on the right hand side in this bar click on save save as give it a title and then you can give it some tags you can give it a summary you can assign categories depending on what you're planning to do with this map for now i'm just going to leave them blank so what we've done here is we've created a map with one layer. There's the layer right there. And I'm going to collapse this so we just see the layer. You can turn the layer on and off with this little eyeball here. Why would you want to do that? Because I want to add more layers. So I'm going to add another layer here. And the same one, actually. I'm going to go back to Living Atlas. I'm going to bring in exactly the same layer again. Okay. Now, why would I want to do that? Because I can choose different attributes and display them, symbolize them differently. So I've done one here. I might want to change the name so I know what this is about. So I could click on this little ellipse, go to rename, and just put in here. So now I know what that layer is all about. Now I'm going to turn it off for a minute and turn this one on. And mess with this one now. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that I'm in county. I click on county. I go to filter. Add the same expression as before. I'm going to make the state Florida. Save that. Then I'm going to go to styles and I'm going to choose a different attribute to highlight on this map. So this, in this case, maybe I do want urban population. I'll leave, I'll place, leave that on there. And I'll decide what kind of style I want to give it. These are going to depend on what kind of data you have. So a single symbol wouldn't work here because we have displaying multiple numeric data. A single symbol would be if you were displaying like the different colleges in Massachusetts or something like that. And you just want to show the colleges. It would be a single thing. But what we're doing here is we're displaying a series of various numbers depending on in this case, urban population. So a good one for that would be, again, shading. Count and, counts and amounts don't really work very well here. It kind of shows the urban population, but it's not very friendly to the eye. And dot distribution has the same issue as before. It's doing it by county. Now, what you could do is you go, you could work with census tracts, but I'm not going to do that for this lab. Maybe we'll do that later on. Okay, so let's go back to counts and amounts here. And I'm going to be doing a few little changes to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to do the basic here. There's lots of other options you could do. I'm going to change the classification of the data. In this case, I'm unable to do that because there aren't enough data to be able to for the computer to process it so i don't have that option so we'll leave it this way for now hit done okay now i'm going to save this again now what we have here is we have two different layers so i want you to do five and i want you to choose different population characteristics for each one and i want you to symbolize each separate layer think about why you're doing it how many categories you may have chosen, what the type of style you may have chosen, why you, you decided to choose what you, ch you chose. You could tell me that in your, on your lab report. 
Now, the other thing you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure you share the map to organization. You can share it to everyone if you want, but that's up to you. You have to at least share it to organization so that I can see it and grade it and save that. Now, once you've done your five different layers, you can go on this little button on the top left here with the three lines and go to content and you will see your map here. This is all your work. Here's the state of Florida. I have another sample map. By the way, if you want to take a look at this sample map, click on my groups and you will see it there. You can take a look at it on your own. Now, what you want to do for lab report is prepare a brief explanation of what you did, two pages or so. You want to include these maps so I can look at them. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the map that you made, open in Map Viewer, make sure you're in this view, and then you just copy and paste this address into your document. And so that when I open up your report, I can reference the map. And then in your report, you just have to talk about your maps and I can go look at them by clicking on this link. So the report is going to have a description of each map. You talk about what you discovered, the, the process that you did, and then a bit brief conclusion telling me how this lab went for you, if you had any pitfalls or any questions you may have, what you liked about it, what you don't, didn't like about it. Then you just go on Blackboard under Module 3, look for the assignment, click on it, and upload your document to me. If you have any questions, please let me know. Take care.